Well, hi everyone and welcome to Perth South and a very belated Happy New Year to you. Well, I didn't get any train-related presents at Christmas, so I decided to buy myself a present for New Year and got this Bachmann DMU. It was Tom from Northwest Trains that brought this to, to my attention. I wasn't aware that Bachmann had produced this model, but when I saw that it was numbered as a proper Scottish region DMU, and, it, and even better, it had uh, Perth at one end and Dundee Taybridge at the other, I couldn't resist. It really is a lovely model of a Class 101 DMU, a Metcam two-car unit, and it's much better than the other uh, Hornby version of a, of a 101 that I have, which uh, is based in the old Lima tooling. The prototype for this model was delivered new to Dundee uh, and worked for a few years there before moving to the Edinburgh area and it stayed in Scotland for, uh, I believe, most of its life. Now the destination lines at either end of the model uh, showing Perth and Dundee Tay Bridge are interesting and represent a a local train service that ran between uh, Perth and Dundee and I'd like to explain a bit about that and, and how I've decided to um, run that on my model railway. So allow me to digress for a couple of minutes and just explain in a couple of maps why we needed a, a local train service from Perth to Dundee. Those of you who know the history of the railway races to the north will know that the winner of the, the race to Aberdeen was decided here at Canaber Junction, where the East Coast Main Line and the West Coast Main Line came together. The section of line from Perth to Canaber was a beautifully engineered fast stretch of line, but it fell victim to the beaching cuts in 1967. And thereafter, all trains from the west side of the country reached Aberdeen via Dundee. And that's still the case to this day. But during the period of my layout, roughly 1962 to 66, the Strathmore line was still open. The line to Dundee was a Caledonian line, less heavily engineered with lots of level crossings. And although there were through mainline trains from Glasgow through to Dundee, many of the trains to Aberdeen stopping in Perth were provided with a connecting service to Dundee serving all the local stations along the line. So the operating practice was that the train would arrive from Dundee in Platform 1 and terminate. It would then move south of the station and shunt back into the Dundee centre siding and it would sit there awaiting its next turn of duty. When that came along, it would move south of the station again and then shunt into Platform 2 for the return journey to Dundee. So I thought it would be nice to recreate that series of moves and using the features of Train Controller uh, do it automatically. Now there are a few challenges in setting this up in Train Controller. The first challenge is that the shunting backwards and forwards several times means that several different schedules will have to be used. The second challenge is that when the train moves into the block south of the station, train controller wants to take it all the way south to the end of those blocks and stopping it there. Now in practice, of course, what we want is for the train to stop just clear of the junction to allow it to immediately return in the opposite direction again. Now to recreate this in train controller, I've created three schedules and the first one is 2D11A. Now I use the four digit train reporting number to name my schedules, but you could call it anything. And this schedule takes the trains from the hidden sidings, any one of the hidden sidings, depending on which one the, the train happens to be in, into platform one, into either of the two lines south of the station, and then it stops there. The second schedule, 2D11B, takes the train from whichever one of these two tracks it's sitting in, uh, sitting on into the Dundee centre siding, it waits there and then it will return it back to one of these two lines again. 
and the third schedule again takes it from uh, whichever of the two uh, lines to the south of the station the train's sitting in into platform two this time uh, and then stops there to pick up passengers and then heads back to the hidden sidings again. Now you'll notice that um, the first one and the last one are very much the same. Uh, they include platforms one and two and it is actually the same schedule but because of the way a train controller works I have to basically um, recreate it as two separate schedules. And then there's something called a schedule sequence uh, you can see it over here, 2D11, and that shows the three schedules linked together as successors, 2D11A, B and C. So the second problem about stopping the train in the correct position is solved by creating additional brake and stop markers. Train controller allows you to add additional brake and stop markers and you can restrict these for the use of, of certain trains or certain schedules. Most of my blocks consist of two occupancy sections or occupancy detectors. There's a main part and then there's a, a short stop section at the end. And what normally happens is a train will uh, decelerate within the block and then when it gets to this uh, additional detection section at the end, that's the signal for the train to stop. But you can get away without without having this extra stop position uh, or stop sensor. In fact, many people um, only have one sensor for the whole of a block. And that's what we're using here. We're basically allowing the train to uh, decelerate in a, a shorter distance, in this case, 70 centimetres. And, and, the, and the train controller calculates the time it takes for the train to slow down and then automatically automatically stops it at, at that position. It's not as accurate as having a, a stop marker, a stop sensor at the end of the block, but it works equally well, particularly when you're stopping the train um, in the middle of the block. So let's close the various dialog boxes and we'll take the train controller out of edit mode and uh, let's give our schedule sequence ago and see how it all works in practice.
So now that we know it works, the fun thing is to run other trains alongside our shuttle train sequence, knowing that train controller will run them safely without crashing into each other. So I'll let this sequence run on and I'll just say thanks for watching, bye for now and I'll see you next time.